Hi, this is Angela with GroceryShrink.com, and I have a unique problem I'm going to show you a solution to in this bedroom. This is my daughter's bedroom that they share together, and they had some really gross carpeting in here that we could not afford to replace. So we tore it up and threw it in the dumpster, and then we tore up the padding underneath, pulled up all the nails, and we had particle board underneath. I'm going to show you kind of what this floor is like. Um, it was a really gross particle board with lots of stains in it, and we painted it with Kills Primer, two coats, and now we're going to lay down this canvas floor cloth. And really this uh, canvas floor cloth you can get at any home improvement store in the painting department. It's a drop cloth, and it's made out of eight pound canvas, and this one in particular is 12 by 15 feet, so it will fit this whole room without my having to sew a seam. Now, it does have seams in it from the factory, and since this is kind of a rustic floor, that didn't bother me, and it's going to work out just fine. So, uh, first thing I've done now is I vacuum the floor really, really good since I've killed it, and you'll notice I'm barefoot, so I'm not tracking lint in on top of that. And now I'm going to iron it because the factory folds from the from the package are really strong and I'd like a, a smoother look. And so to give myself a little bit of padding, since this is so big, it was going to be really hard to do on the ironing board, I brought a beach towel up here that I'm going to smooth out underneath the canvas. And I'm just going to iron this floor cloth in kind of in place where it's going to end up being. Now if you're wondering about how this floor cloth is going to wear, we are going to staple it underneath the baseboards around the corners. And then once that's good and stretched tight, I'm going to put cord around over the top of it and polyurethane it with floor grade polyurethane, probably four coats. This will allow me to um, wet mop this floor when it gets dirty, but it won't cover up the nice um, canvas texture of the floor. I, it's going to take me a little while to get this ironed. I'll keep track of the time for you and let you know how long, but I'm not going to make you watch. So when I get this done, we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Hi, I ironed most of the floor in a half an hour yesterday. I think it would have taken me an hour to finish, but I really got tired of doing it, to be honest. So what I decided to do was start iron or stapling down around the perimeter and ironing a little bit as I go through the middle. I found that although it's better to iron with the towel underneath, it is possible to iron without the towel. And one of the benefits of that was um, I was able to find some nail heads sticking up and some staples that didn't get removed properly. They'd actually been painted over and were stuck down, but they would have hurt some little toes. So I was really glad to find those and get those pulled up. So what I have right now is an electric stapler and that plugged in. I tried it with this manual staple gun. It didn't have enough power to get the staples all the way in the floor. I started in the furthermost corner and I have tucked just this hemmed area underneath the baseboard and against the wall. If it's possible to remove the baseboard, that would probably be easier. Um, that's something I really didn't want to do here. So um, I'm going to show you kind of a couple of staples. I'm just pulling, um, kind of manually stretching as I go. And I'm stapling it down. Now those aren't going down all the way, so I may come back later with a, with a hammer and uh, maybe a pick or something to kind of nail this in. Now, I don't know if you can see, but right here I have a vent. So what I'm going to do is lightly stretch, Oop, light touch, I'll have to pull those out later. You don't have to be awesome to get this done. Okay, light touch. All right, and then I'm going to take a magic marker, and I'm going to trace what I can see of the vent right here. And this I'm actually going to come in with scissors and cut this part out. I'm just kind of going by feel so that I can find this. I'm going to take scissors and cut out right on my lines. And I'm not really worried about fraying because when I get the polyurethane on here, it's going to block it from fraying.
staples around the edge. working like this all the way around the room. When I get ready to do the closet, there's going to be a little seam there, and we'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, you probably noticed I wasn't very good with this staple gun, and I was shooting in more than one staple at a time, and I was also not getting them very flush with the floor. Well, I found out a neat trick if you're really bad at stapling like I am. You can pull out the extra staples with the needle nose plier, and then the ones, you can use the same needle nose pliers for the ones that don't go in all the way. Here's the prime example. It's sticking up, which will make it really hard for me to install the cord around. So I'm going to put the needle nose pliers, I, I could just hammer it in, except my hammer doesn't reach that far. So I'm going to put my needle nose pliers on top of it and hammer on the base, and just one hard stroke gets those staples right there. So there you go. That's it. Okay, I have the floor stapled on two sides, and I have ironed it starting in the back corner all the way this direction, and I kind of stretched it as I went, and I also used a spray bottle and a heavy steam on a very hot iron, and what that did is it kind of reactivated the Kills Primer that I have down and gave me a light adhesion on the canvas, so it it's, looks really smooth, slightly stuck down, I can feel it up very easily, and also it kind of shrunk the canvas in places so that it is not lumpy but it adheres pretty good. You might see some dark spots as Heidi pans around the room on the shot. Those are still wet and I'm going to let them dry completely before I put the kills down, or excuse me, the polyurethane down. Now I'm ready to trim. You can see I'm just a little bit big on my canvas drop cloth and so to do this I'm going to use a carpenter pencil. It's one of those big flat square ones because it's going to fit right underneath my baseboard. I'm tucking my canvas underneath because I want the, to hide the raw edge under the baseboard. I'm just going to push all the way against the wall with this carpenter pencil as I go. And then I can pull this back out and use that as a line to cut on with my fabric scissors. And once I do that, it's just tuck and staple the way I did the rest of the room. I will catch you when I get all this all stapled down, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the seam in the closet and kind of how I'm going to handle the doorways.